Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. As we continue to explore what's inside these cartridges and whether they allow us to directly fill them with ink once they reach a certain low level or empty, I have discovered that Canon cartridges seem to be extremely easy to refill, especially the large format printer family. Uh, as well as the small desktop units, uh, highly different than Epson equivalents. Uh, Epson cartridges are basically designed to have a maze, and by that I mean compartment after compartment, internal valves that absolutely prevent you from refilling original cartridges. Yeah, you might be able to get a resetter for them, but what's the use if you cannot really refill them? So that's why we have to sort of rely on Canon. And many times I get told, hey, Jose, you seem to uh, favor Canon printers over Epson printers. Well, yeah, that's why. I would prefer, if I had the choice, to use an original cartridge that I can easily refill without too much tempering or zero tempering, that would be preferable. And allows me to say reset the chip and possibly even print basically like we can on the Pro 1000 without really resetting a chip at all. Just simply by maintaining ink inside the cartridge. But someone brought up the point that, hey, have you actually looked inside the cartridge to see if there are any sensors? Because you're coming up with all these, you know, the theories as to how, for example, the Pro 1000 is able to determine whether a cartridge is empty or not. Well, really, that's a waste of time to do, and I'll tell you why. Unlike Epson cartridges, including the ones for, say, the P800, P900, and earlier, we'll just touch on the large format type printers. They have an internal ink bag with a one-way valve that you cannot push ink in. You can only draw ink out. I have come up with a method of disabling that function and allowing me to inject ink in, but it's kind of iffy and you may end up with a cartridge that will leak uncontrollably inside your printer. I've done this for years and I've had my little disasters uh, among those years. So I prefer to just deal with this. Now, let me show you what the Pro 1000 cartridges look like. <clears throat> Here's one of them, untampered. Basically, you have the cartridge body and the cap and then the compartment where the chip basically just floats. You can hear it jiggling in there. And then the valve, and the valve is extremely simple. It's a little component with a spring inside that keeps the poppet valve closed when you remove the cartridge. And when you insert it, allows the poppet valve to be depressed under pressure of that spring. And there are some O-rings that seal against the spigot where the ink enters the printer. Simple. The idea that there are internal sensors it just doesn't hold water. I have actually cut one open. I'm not going to use one of my precious cartridges and cut it open just to show you, but I've done it in the past. Now, once you remove the cap, and this is what you would have to do to install a single-use chip if you choose to go that route. You remove it, and then you pop it back in place. That'll fit in this orientation onto your cartridge after you have inserted the chip and i did have one around here where did it go right here in front of me so here is the chip original oem chip again it's hard to see but it's really irrelevant you know what i'm talking about if you have some of these cartridges already now once you remove and i'll get up a little closer to you let me make sure i don't drop any of this let's move on up once you remove the valve, this is what you have. It's a little bright. So all it is is this compartment 
it holds a spring here's a spring in place just like so puppet valve simply looks like this it's so small almost to be considered you know imperceptible i guess you pop it inside the spring like so and then you insert this o-ring that's all it is folks that is all that's holding that puppet valve in place like so there you go and that is your valve okay nothing really intricate that's the only i guess you can call mechanical components that exist inside the cartridge let me take everything apart i'll put it back in its little bag but that is it that's that's all that that those cartridges have you can inject ink in the problem is that there is no exit port for say air to vent the air out so in cartridges like these if you're not going to drill a hole like i have done you can pressurize ink in that will allow some ink to come in but the internal air pressure will be positive and then you retract the plunger to create a negative pressure you're holding it in this position so the ink is at the bottom inject say 10 ml of ink pull back create a vacuum that allows another 10 ml to go in a again pull back create a vacuum back and forth back and forth back and forth until you have injected about 80 ml of ink that will give you a full factory load it takes a good minute or two to do that uh, if you're very careful and you start with an empty cartridge and you load the correct volume of ink in your syringe you will be able to do this without getting ink splattered on you when you remove the syringe with this special tip you will not have a little geyser of ink all over yourself and people have made the mistake to attempt to inject 80 ml of ink on a cartridge that already had maybe 15 and of course it doesn't fit it has to squirt out so make sure the cartridges are empty if you choose to go that route now you would have to have a new chip installed fill it to 80 pop it back into the printer and it is then declared as genuine and you start from full condition and that will allow you to continue printing just like you did originally with your untampered oem cartridges that you may have purchased or got with the printer now the same thing applies even for the larger format so you have these hold 80 and that's the largest size cartridge you can buy but when you jump over to the 2000 or 2100 and higher you can put these big old cartridges in your printer and this is what they look like without the cap removed so here's the one with the cap removed this is a little bit different this has a port for ink to leave the cartridge and a port for air to be allowed to enter the cartridge that allows an exchange an equal exchange as ink leaves air can enter and relieve that vacuum that would normally then be created the same thing is for these big old cartridges they also have two ports on them one for ink to come out and one for air to enter you may ask well what about these what about the pro 1000 well the tip that enters the cartridge has two functions it's a dual function tip it allows ink to be extracted and it allows the cartridge to be vented but all this is once i remove this cap once i remove the valve components it's just an empty container there are no magical sensors installed inside none of that stuff it does not communicate whatsoever with the printer other than telling it hey i am a yellow cartridge and i had this much ink the computation of ink use takes place internally and that information is flashed to the chip periodically as you are printing and as we have discovered if you can keep ink inside that cartridge after it reaches a low condition it'll stay at that low condition until you choose not to insert any more ink or inject any more ink in your cartridge at that point it will then reach empty by the method that i have already described in a previous video so that is it there's nothing inside these cartridges folks is they're just empty containers that's why you can drill 
as I have done here and basically with a needle and syringe add 700 ml of ink to these cartridges and continue to use them you don't even need a chip anymore okay just catch it before it is low and it'll then go too low but then you still have ink inside that will continue to feed that internal compartment go back to my previous video where i discussed that and you will see it's called my crazy theory so that is it for now. I hope you enjoy these videos that I've been putting out for the last several years. I've been trying to come up with new ideas and new ways of doing things. Uh, most of the color management type information uh, that applied to printers that were 10 years old still apply to printers now. So the same information, as basic as it might sound, applies to today's printer. So don't worry about not having a video telling me how to print on a 4100. It doesn't matter. If you can print on a Pro 1000, you can print on a 4100. If you can print on a P800, you can print on a P900. It doesn't really matter. It's the same, same technology. Okay, so thank you again. Happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye.